As filmmakers and cinematographers, we have a ton of decisions to make that will ultimately affect our final image. Now you're probably wondering, why are we in an oven? That's a great question and I'm getting there. It's worth knowing that a real value of mine as a filmmaker is to capture as much of my image as I can in camera. So the question of today's video is how, why, and if we should use vintage lenses to bake in a certain cinematic feel to our footage. Now that I've made my point, let's go somewhere a little more comfortable. That feels better. I've always leaned into a look in my films that have a lot of character to it. And that could mean a lot of different things to me. I love lifted shadows, lifted blacks that are often color biased, oftentimes towards like that cyan green color. That's a real, mm, love, love that. But that could mean bloomed highlights. It could be lens flares. It could be dust and debris, any number of imperfections. And I really lean into those imperfections because I feel it begins to make the image feel more real or authentic or, or genuine or, or human even because none of us humans are perfect. So to capture a perfect image would no longer be human. And I've always leaned on my color grading to help me achieve that look in post-production. But as I mentioned before, that a real value of mine as a cinematographer is to capture as much of my image as I can in camera, speaking to the authenticity of the image. So that created a bit of an internal struggle within me because I was often using the, the cleanest, most modern lenses to capture my images. And that would give me an image that was very clean, it's very neutral, it was unbiased, some might say clinical. And then I would turn right around and do the exact opposite of that in post-production. So I started looking for a solution and I think I found the secret ingredient or at least one secret ingredient and it was from a friend of mine here on YouTube, Edmund Elijah. And I started seeing the stuff that you were shooting and like the tests that you were doing and I loved it. Like I just loved the way that it rendered and like the colors that you got out of it. So I'm like, why am I not doing this? So here I am, I'm, I'm, I'm dabbling now, but like you were the reason that I started shooting vintage lenses. So why? did you start shooting on, on vintage lenses? Yeah. Uh, so before the C70, I had an FX3 and FX6. And if I wanted to rely on autofocus, those are the two best autofocus cameras on the market. And I was running the Sigma art lenses with that. They were incredibly clean, incredibly sharp, and the autofocus was super snappy. But it looked very sterile to me. And I just really like the tactile and tangible aspect of using my camera. I am physically moving forward and I am physically focusing and changing these things more than letting the camera like fully automate itself. Pros and cons of vintage lenses, they're much more difficult to purchase. Um, if you go on eBay, there's excellent, excellent, plus, plus, excellent, plus, 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 plus. And all of that means that it's full of like mold and fungus. So you need the excellent plus, 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 super awesome lens deal. And it's just super confusing. So I pay more money to purchase from KEH and their, their rating system's a lot more <laughs> like applicable and yeah. actually makes sense. Another con is that because of the consistency when they're being built, like the flares on my 50 mil f1.4 are the ugliest things ever and i want to replace that lens but it's now a sentimental lens because of the way that i got it so it's like i'm going to own two of the same lens because one has ugly flares yeah pros are definitely you get you get the cinema lens feel because you're able to control your focus and your iris and usually it's all metal housing and you get you get pretty close to like owning a cinema lens when you're treating this vintage photography lens like a cinema lens. Another pro is cost and savings. I have a uh, 15 mil f3.5 and it cost me $700 and I've converted it over. So it's less than a thousand dollar investment. But if you try to get the DZO film, like I think it's their 16 mil, it's double almost triple the price of that. Yeah. So there is a lot of savings in it, but you have to go the the right route. And oftentimes I, I would say like the size of it as well. I, I'm, yeah. I'm, 
always trying to take less things with me. Mm -hmm. I'm not good about doing that because I'm also a bit of a gearhead. So like that's yeah. another real it's another real internal struggle of mine is like I'm a minimalist that loves camera stuff. <laughs> so. Mm. so here's what we can expect if we decide to shoot on vintage lenses for our next project. And we're gonna do a little pros and cons action here. So the first pro is the unique characteristics of the lenses. And that's why we're here in the first place. It's those unique characteristics, those those traits that deviate from perfection that allow us to capture an image in camera that begins to feel a little bit more authentic. And each different brand of lens is gonna have its own unique traits. And each, each lens within that is gonna have its own traits. But some of the popular lenses you'll see out there, uh, the Canon FDs, the Nikon lenses, the Leica lenses, uh, the Helios lenses, and each one of those brands has its own characteristics, has its own voice to it. One of those unique characteristics might be the bokeh, the out of focus elements of the image. And each lens is gonna render those out of focus areas differently. For example, the Helios, it's known far and wide for its swirly bokeh that it has. And that's something you can only capture with a lens like that. Another characteristic might be the contrast ratios or even the micro contrast ratios. These lenses are often a little bit softer, a little bit less contrasty, and, and there's good and bad to that. It's kind of up to you to decide where you want to fall in that category. It could be the lens coatings that were applied to these lenses back in the day, back in 1970, 1980. By extension of that, the way that those coatings have degraded over time can introduce maybe a little bit of a color shift and that'll affect the image. It might affect the way that the lens flares and the lens flares itself can be a unique characteristic. The way that light bounces around the lens and, and if there's any chromatic aberration within that or there might be some, some green or magenta shift to the flares all adds to the unique characteristics of the lens. So it's kind of up to you to decide which characteristics you're looking for and which set of lenses are going to help you achieve that look. For me, I'm, I'm in the process of building out a Leica set uh, of Leica R's, specifically from the years 1979 to 1984-ish, but more on that later. That'll take us to our next pro, which is going to be the fact that these lenses are manual focus lenses. And that feels like kind of a funny thing to have up here because I love autofocus lenses. I use autofocus quite a bit, but there's a couple reasons I'm putting it here. The first one is I truly believe that having control of your focus as a cinematographer is a great storytelling piece and it's also a great skill set to have. Uh, I've personally, you know, relied on autofocus probably too much in my career and that skill set of mine has become underdeveloped. So these being manual focus lenses, if I want to use them, I have to get better at that skill set. So it's going to help make me a better storyteller, make me a better cinematographer. And that's what this channel is all about, right? Um, and that's what my whole goal is with a camera, is to just become the best filmmaker that I, that I possibly can. So this is helping me do that. And these lenses being manual focus, they differ from the photo lenses of today. Trying to manual focus with a photo lens of today, they're oftentimes electronic focus, focused by wire systems. And that means the focus throw is, is very touchy, it's very sensitive, and it can be hard to nail your focus. The manual focus ring is entirely mechanical, which means that the focus throw is much longer, and that really helps to nail our focus. Pair that with the focus peaking that we get in today's cameras and you've got a really great setup. You're in a great position to be able to successfully pull off using manual focus. This is a big reason as to why cinema lenses exist. They were designed with manual focus in mind, with, with mechanical focus gears. They were also designed to, to minimize breathing so that way they're, they're more optimized for video purposes. We don't get the, the minimized breathing with the, the vintage lenses. There's you know going to be some breathing, but we do get that mechanical focus. And, and it's it's kind of like getting a cinema lens, but for, for much less money, which is gonna take us into our next pro. And that's going to be the fact that these are very cost-effective lenses. Now, the caveat is it depends on which lens set you decide to go with and, and what demand is like at the time you're trying to buy them. But for the most part, they're gonna be less expensive. And this means that you can get some incredible full frame fast aperture lenses to use on your next project. And you get to own some really incredible glass, which is awesome. And then because they're more cost effective, you can experiment a little more. You can try out a bunch of different lenses to see which one's gonna give you the look that you're after. 
All right, that's gonna bring us to the cons of our vintage lenses. And the first con is gonna be that sometimes, depending on the lens, it can be hard to match these lenses together. One of the things that I know I take for granted with our modern lenses of today, being as clean and unbiased as they are, so we can cut between different lenses really pretty seamlessly. That's not necessarily the case all the time with vintage lenses. Sometimes within a set, different focal lengths might have different characteristics. Most often, a little bit of a different color shift to the lens, and that could be for any number of reasons. But what that does cause is a little bit of a headache in post-production to get those shots to match together. So the way that you can work around this specific con is as you build out your lens set, do a little bit of research, of course, but also try to accumulate a set of lenses that were manufactured in a very similar similar year. Get, get serial numbers that are very close together. For example, for my Leica R set, I said I was going to build my set from lenses that were made from 1979 to roughly 1982 to maybe 84. Uh, it takes a little bit of extra work, a little bit extra looking around to find your set, but it's well worth it to try to get these all to match together and mitigate that first con as best we can. Our next con is gonna be the fact that these lenses are just manual focus. Yeah, it's a pro and a con. <laughs> the fact that these lenses are just manual focus means that I don't get the option of using autofocus. You know, at least with the modern lens, I can decide which one I wanna use. I don't have the option here. So there are certainly times where autofocus far exceeds my capabilities and I would like to have that tool will be able to use it and you don't get that here. So it is what it is. You know, we, we get the, the benefit of it and we get the con of it as well. Moving on. The final con is gonna tie right into the thesis of this video and it's the fact that that look is baked in. When you use vintage lenses, you're deciding then and there, this is how I want the footage to look. This is the direction that I want to go. The beauty of capturing clean, unbiased raw material with a, a modern lens is that you can utilize some of the great tools in post-production to recreate a very similar look. And then you have a little bit more control as to the intensity or, or how you want that look to, to come through. I'm gonna make an argument here today that, that capturing the look in camera is going to exceed what can be done in post-production from an authenticity perspective, but that's gonna be a decision for you to make. Just know that it's a core value of mine to try to capture, again, as much of my image as I can in camera. The ultimate question you'll have to ask yourself is, is this the right look for my project? If it is, then you're in luck because I think vintage lenses truly are the best way to achieve that filmic look in camera. If your interest is piqued, go ahead and check out this video on how to modify vintage lenses to work with modern cinema cameras. But before you go, make sure you do all the YouTube things and I will see you in the next vid. Thank you.